Hello and welcome back to our webcast series on the topic of orthographic projection. So in this video we're going to continue on from our previous video which focused on how to create an auxiliary elevation and in this video we're going to look at how to create an auxiliary plan view of an object. So like our previous video we're going to conduct it in both 2D and in 3D and try and explain exactly where um, the lines are coming from and so to give you an idea of what's actually going on with it. So here you can see we have our two dimensional um, elevation and plan of an object and here we have a 3D um, image of the same object. Now if you remember from our previous video we said that in order to get the true shape of an object you have to look straight in at it or perpendicular to it. So if we look and focus in on this red surface here where we can see that in neither my front elevation or plan view do I see a true shape of that. In our plan view we see a portion of the red shape but it appears narrower or is foreshortened is what we call that. It appears narrower than what it really is. So if we want to get the true shape of that object we need to maneuver ourselves so we're looking perpendicular to it and create a new video. So because we're looking in at an angle to our elevation our next image is going to be an auxiliary plan view. So that's one difference between an auxiliary plan and an auxiliary elevation. For an auxiliary plan we're looking in perpendicular to our elevation and the resulting image is going to be a plan view whereas for an auxiliary elevation we were walking around the object and getting an auxiliary elevation. So what we see here is happening in 2D we'll just do the exact same thing over here in 3D and we'll maneuver ourselves so we're looking straight down at it. So we're looking in perpendicular to our red surface here. Um, it's also helpful to imagine if this is our Lego man looking in here that I'm just going to place him here in my plan view. This is what he would be look like seen from above just to give you an idea and we're going to borrow from this in a little while. Normally we don't show um, the direction in both views but this is actually quite helpful um, to imagine uh, where our auxiliary is going to come from. So if we have our two components, we have our front elevator, we have our direction and we have our object, we need our third component which is a plane to project onto. So that's our x1, y1 line and that's going to be in or perpendicular to our line of sight or parallel with the sloped edge that we're trying to see the true shape of. So we'll do the same thing then in our 3D view. There is our plane like so and what we see at the moment is our plane in a folded up state so we're seeing our plane as an edge so you can imagine as I look straight in from the front here all this plane here this sheet of glass is seen as one single line my x y x1 y1 line like so so to get our 3d view what we're going to do then is we're going to simply project our image of what we see onto that plane like so and there we are in our 3d there's our image projected onto it. So at the moment it's in a folded up state so all we see is just our sheet of glass as an edge. So what we want to do then is fold it out using this line here where our plane crosses the vertical plane this time. So it's being hinged off the vertical plane not like in our auxiliary elevation where it was been hinged off of the horizontal plane. We were folding it out flat so it was on the ground. In this case here we're going to fold it against the vertical plane, the back wall and it's going to hinge out like so. So our hinge line is up against the back wall not the ground like with our auxiliary elevation. So if you remember our last um, auxiliary elevation video where we find the heights we had this one two rule so we said that if we're trying to draw our image here we count back to our previous xy line so if this is our xy line that we're dealing with here we count back to our previous xy line which is our xy here we count back two views, or one, two rules. So this is the video we're trying to create, or the image we're trying to create. We count back one view, count back two views. So we're measuring from our plan view this time to our XY line, like so. And that's where we're going to take our distances from, like so. And we step them off here, one, two, and three, using the X1, Y1 line as our base. And just to give you an idea of what it is we're going to see, if I just rotate my object around, we can see when we look at our from our spectator like that, you can see the image of what we're going to see is going to be out away from the back wall. Because the object is this distance away from the back wall or the vertical plane, well it's going to be the same here in our um, auxiliary 
plan view. So the object isn't going to be on or resting on the X1, Y1 line as it did with our auxiliary elevation. It's going to be out our distance from it. And if we go back to our 3D view, you can see this makes sense. Because where we're looking here, you can see there's our Lego man looking down at it like that. There is our back wall here to his left hand side. So there's the back wall to the left hand side and we can see there it is in our plan view so there's the left hand side of our lego man and he is going to see this vertical plane as an edge so this is the vertical plane here seen as an edge in our image from what the actual lego man is seeing so with that in mind we then just take each of our plane our surfaces one at a time and we project them into our auxiliary so we're going to take the uh, the true shape of our red surface first of all so we look at the lines on our corners here and we just continue those on like so and from our plan view we can see that well the red surface here is going to be the distance 3 and the distance 1 away from the XY line so that's what we're going to mark in here so there is the true shape of our red surface as our Lego man is looking in this direction he's going to see the top surface here so again we're going to continue on that surface giving us our top surface like that so this is our top surface here projected on like so same thing applies with this L shape here like that so we locate the corners there's a corner here and a corner here and we follow the lines along and again we look at our distances we're going to have the distance D3 D2 and D1 this time and it's going to give us this L shape now some students find it difficult to orientate the object but remember as our Lego man is looking down the L shape here, this portion of it here, is going to be on his left hand side and this notch here is going to be on his right hand side. So there's the L, the L portion here on his left and the notch on the right hand side. So it is, and again, the space between that and the, the back wall. Here's the space between uh, what we see and the, the back wall or vertical plane as well. Uh, we're also going to see our front surface here like so. So we can project our point down and true like so giving us our front surface there and we're also going to see this little notched surface here so there is our edge here giving us our edge and you can see it's stepped back because when we're from where we're looking at it this line here and this line here are going to appear stepped back now what we have here looks like the completed drawing but like in our last example don't forget we want to draw in our hidden detail as well so if we look at the back edge here we haven't used that line yet so we continue that along and that gives us our hidden line for our object giving us the completed auxiliary plan view of our object and what we're seeing it here is our object in our folded out state so if we imagine in our 3d drawing there is our object hinged out giving us our object in our folded out state like so so there is our object in our folded out state and what we're looking at then is the plan view also folded out giving us our completed view uh, like we did in our last video i'll just disappear away some of the excess color on that so this is what you're going to see on your sheet so this is our auxiliary plan view and it is an area where some students find a little bit more difficult to visualize because it's not resting on our x1 y1 like that because it's got this distance out but i often think if you imagine our lego man here looking from the top there it makes a bit more sense why there's this distance that we're expecting to see here like so so that's an auxiliary plan view or the explanation of an auxiliary plan view hopefully this has been of some use to you and stay tuned for more videos thank you very much